And if there is a evil God in intervening through a assertion of will and power uh, into our affairs as humans, it is not individual point. It is not the choices of individuals. It is the combination of uh, the, the ritualized sadism of those choices. And I think that's the real uh, symbolic value of, of, you know, Epstein shit and, uh, and Bohemian Grove. It's the, it's just, a, it's a, it's a sociological observation that people of a, of sufficient acuity of mind to know what they are doing when they are presiding over this system have to ritually invert human values in order to continue living. Consciously, subconsciously, they do this. The more self-aware they are, the more consciously they have to do it. And that means ritual affirmations of evil. Now, the problem with this metaphor and the reason it's dangerous just out there as a way to understand the world and why it leads to things like QAnon is that I think the way people understand this process is as powerful people doing rituals to affirm their power and to uh, make us miserable. I honestly feel that it is is that these rituals are better understood as coping mechanisms. You are trapped at the apex of a power structure that you are fully invested in. It's giving you more, it's giving you pleasure, but more importantly, it is giving you the anxiety of losing that pleasure. But it's also making you carry out monstrous acts and, and, and preside over monstrosity. Well, if you feel that you cannot leave that position, and you won't, remember, if you do and leave, somebody else comes in who's in that spot who doesn't have those qualms, then you have to do something to, to make the evil good. Hitler did that these, through his uh, racial occultism, and our rulers do it through whatever fucking weird uh, uh, reptile religions they follow. Now, not all of the ruling class has to do that. Remember I said they're mostly dummies. And dumb people never have to worry about this stuff. Dumb people are so fully propagandized by their own bullshit that they spew out culturally that they it doesn't even occur to them. Like the Ricketses. Like those dumbasses. Like the fucking Koch brothers who think libertarianism was real. Most of them are fucking dumb, by which I mean they are propagandized by uh, uh, truths that, given their uh, exposure to reality, they shouldn't believe, basically, is what it boils down to. Like We, as regular people, can be forgiven for believing the propagandized notions of American, uh, the values. That's why we live in the black iron prison. That's why we carry out evil, even though we're trying to do good. It's because we emerge into a culture. We're told certain things. We can only live a life and then, and then compare it to our experiences or compare our experiences to what we're told. And then we have to deal with it. If you are at the apex of power, you have a different experience of, of existence. You see different things that undermine all of the bullshit that you tell everybody else. So it is a sufficient system of power. You should have no belief in any of this stuff. You should understand it to be bullshit. That's why they do ritual stuff to fill in the gap. But if you're just a dumbass who rises there because all it needs is a body and a chair. It doesn't need will. It doesn't, the system at those points, it doesn't need human initiative. It just needs a fucking body to fill a gap in a chain of reaction. They need somebody to complete the fucking, uh, um, to complete the circuit. They need a warm body to, to grab two uh, hot ends together. And so if they're dumbasses, 
They actually think this stuff. Ron Johnson, senator from Wisconsin. Uh, my cousin knows his family and has been to his house. And he said that every room of their big fucking McMansion has Fox News on at maximum volume. Their house. He's a moron. He should know better. But he doesn't need to know better. Because what do you need to be to be a senator? You need to be a warm body in a suit who will vote away. Same way in all structures of government. There are a few places at, at, high, at high levels of uh, sensitivity and intricacy that you still need to intelligence. And that's where all the sickos are. That's where all the people who have some freakish, inverted, consciously evil understanding of the world live. Because you still need to be smart. But everybody else is just believing the same bullshit that we all do. Um, so Rumsfeld died today, and I gotta say, I understand why people want to, like, celebrate when that happens, when one of these guys dies, when one of these ghouls actually dies and proves that they are not immortal reptiles. Although, honestly, do we know for sure that any of these people die? Do we know for sure that they're not just molting from one fucking flesh skin to another? How do we know that they're not just peeling off their decrepit uh, Rumsfeld or H.W. Bush uh, scales, stepping out of it, and being a, a crisp, new, wet creature uh, that can come on the scene and create a whole new arc of evil through the world. Like the demonic fucking uh, archons that they are. I mean, these guys are archons. These guys are, they're so close to the center of evil and they're so uh, consequential in the, the misery of so many others that they're imbued with like, Real spiritual power, I think. They are sort of dark wizards. I mean, and you, you know, we know for a fact that they all, to some degree or another, and you can argue about what degree, that they all love performing rituals of power. From getting your ass paddled and having to jack off in a coffin for to join skull and bones, or like how, uh, what's his nuts? Um, David Cameron... The, uh, the the absolute oaf British uh, 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 prime minister who put his dick in a pig's mouth. They love ritualized performances of humiliation as like a gateway to power. And then like indulgence uh, as like a sacred ritual. Like, like you are sacrificing millions on the altar of like your personal satisfaction and pleasure you have to have if you're a thinking pure person with a fucking heart and yes of course these people are all sociopathic but they also have they have identities that extend beyond that they're not pure uh you know like nobody is purely self materially uninterested, right? Like there's always something surrounding that. And then they have to create channels to work through it. They have to vent all the associated bad feelings that come with being in that position. And they do that through ritualized indulgence or denial. And of course, that's the difference between uh, powerful conservatives and liberals is denial versus indulgence. But if you're, when you're at the very top, you create rituals of indulgence. And that's what these people do. From fucking Bohemian Grove to whatever the fuck they were doing on Epstein's Island. They have this ritualized uh, gradation of power that is conferred through uh, performance of cruelty. Uh, Sallow got that 100% correct about like what is at the base of like he said he was talking about fascism but really any ruling power in a, in the moment of crisis like the whole context of Sallow right is that that is the uh, puppet regime that's the Nazi puppet regime that was around um, Mussolini uh, in northern Italy after uh, Mussolini was rescued from uh, Italian like state custody, the Italian state that had uh, overturned him and was negotiating surrender with the Allies uh, and, and imprisoned Mussolini, 
for his many crimes, uh, when he was busted out by of uh, the, like, it, it really is some James Bond stuff. Otto Skorzeny, who was like the Nazi James Bond, uh, flew Mussolini out of an island fortress on a fucking, uh, on a, uh, what do you call him? A glider? Like, he took a fucking glider. It's wild. And then they put him and a bunch of his, like, top fascist cronies up in charge of this puppet regime, the Salo Social Republic, that was quickly enveloped and destroyed and and uh, was finally over overrun by partisans, communist partisans, who captured Mussolini and executed him and famously strung him up by his heels. Uh, you know, one of the people who participated in the firing squad that killed Mussolini became an Italian communist politician after the war and was actually in, in Parliament. So these, uh, the fascists who run Italy, or run this little portion of Italy in the film, in Pasolini's uh, film, are... Consumed all in their, uh, consuming all of their time with these elaborate uh, rituals of sadism, where they take these poor young people and subject them to the most horrifying violence that is explicitly uh, uh, related to their erotic enjoyment of it. They're not just watching it coldly; it is it is sexual, and it is a fusion of like sexuality, like the 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 uh, it is taking bodily connection. And stripping it entirely of intimacy and replacing it with domination, which is the end state of the ruling class in terminal crisis of death. It strikes out at everything because it is isolated from everything. And so eroticism is all of life. All of life is aesthetics as it is under fascism. And those aesthetics are of theatrical violence and cruelty. And of course, that's present in capitalism at every stage. But when you get to the end point, and the, and the Salo Social Republic, it was 120 days, just like Sodom, before it was overrun. So these people were partying in a burning building, and they all knew it. Nobody thought that they were uh, in charge. Nobody thought that they, were, they had the fucking allies on the run. They knew that these were the last days. And they engaged as you would. That means that when you get to the end of capitalism, all that's left is dominion, and a culture around dominion, an intimate dominion that is required by the intimacy of crisis conditions necessitates, necessitates an eroticized uh, sadism. Most of us who are having these conversations, and this is where a lot of the confusion comes in about things like the PMC, all the people within this discussion, if, if they closed their eyes and said, where would you imagine yourself if you were going through like a portal to that period? Where would you imagine yourself? And of course, a lot of them would say, actually, I'd be the partisans. I'd be the communist partisans. No, you would be at the Salo Republic. But will you be, because the Salo Republic is the closing neck, uh, uh, the gilded collar coming around the necks of those in the center of the global capitalist system as it pulls away from the periphery as the climate uh, catastrophes uh, uh, accelerate. So you're never going to be outside of it. You're always going to be in it. And so you're either going to be on top or you're going to see yourself fall down to a position of total exploitation. Most of the people who are talking about politics, if you actually pulled their soul, they would say that they would imagine that they would be on top. But because of the trajectory of downward mobility in America, because the final dissolution of the Fordist Compromise, because of the fact that the... Uh, that the homeowning, uh, like semi-autonomous uh, suburban yeoman of America, uh, that that their entire that their share of the capital pie ha uh, has been gone, has been cut away for thirty years now, forty years now, and you're just living off of the fat of this dead dead thing, the American labor movement. Uh, they're just on the on on this corpse, eating the fat of it. It is a cargo cult, and so everybody who went to college thinking that they were going to get a job and be able to live a life like their parents, their own place, 
uh, their kids, uh, some sort of sense of control over their 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 leisure time, their workflow, uh, 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 and confidence that their children would have a fucking future. Those things are all gone. But people still have those expectations because that's how they were brought up. And that's the conflict. And that's why you have people saying that the PMC is the new elite. No. But do they fancy themselves that in the global conflict for con uh, over resources that we're currently in, the final grasp of, of, of for, for, for air as, as the water levels literally rise, uh, the continuation of the war that's been going on ever since... Uh, the end of World War II, really, to to uh, create a economy as a giant hose sucking uh, surplus to the west from uh, the south, from to, from to from the to the north from the south, a giant hose. And that's continuing in a context now of genuine uh, accelerating entropy uh, and a feedback loop whereby the externalities of capitalism, which are not priced into capitalist transactions, but exist nonetheless in real life, are accumulating. And the system as it is cannot address them because it doesn't see them. It's dark matter in, in the world. According to the, the rationalist approach that dominates our economic understanding of the world, that is what makes us do transactions the way we do. Is premised on the notion that there is an outs exterior, an outside of the transaction world where all of the friction accumulated in that transaction, all of the social alienation that accumulates from subjects who are forced into these conditions, all of the destabilization of the ecology that occurs from, uh, from changing things like carbon dioxide outputs and uh, putting acid in fucking uh, plastic in the environment, like actually changing things. And in every one of those transactions that is assumed as the undergirding uh, logic of the algorithm of, of profit extraction, that thing that is not priced just happens somewhere else. But there is nowhere else to account for it. The thing that's supposed to account for it, I would say, in the tele if there is a teleology of Marxism, it is that this dark matter ends up creating its own articulation, its own social uh, reality that can then come into conflict with this broken system that cannot recognize what's in front of it. That is the hope of class consciousness. But the machinery of class consciousness broke in the 70s. So we're now in a point where there is just this accelerating crisis that will only be resolved by it starting to break up and change the conditions and relationships that undergird these dynamics. Because they can be arrested and diverted at every point is the key.